Shabbat Shalom, child of Yah. And uh, I truly hope you guys and you and your family had a blessed and an amazing week. So welcome to this week's Shabbat Table Mana. And uh, we will be discussing Numbers 11, 23. Numbers 11, 23. So let's read it. Numbers 11, 23 says, And Yah said to Moshe, Is the arm of Yah too short? Now see whether my word meets you or not. So let's understand the context of what is happening here first. The Israelites were freed from the bondage of Egypt and, and, uh, they, and they had to travel. But after a short distance or after a short while, they began to complain against Abba Yahuwah and against Moses. So Abba punished them as we read in Numbers 11 from verses 1 to 3. Among those who journeyed with the Israelites from Egypt were some foreigners, because we read about this mixed multitude of nations. So along with Israel were other people from other nations as well. And this uh, we can read in Exodus 12, 38. Now these people, all of them complained. They complained that they were tired and they, uh, and they were tired of having the same food every day. Even though it was miraculously supplied by Abba Yah, they wanted more. They wanted different food. They wanted something else. They wanted the food they were used to in Egypt, according to verses 4 to 9 of Numbers 11. So the discontent and the rebellion of these people spread throughout the camp quickly. And these multitude of people started looking to Moses to supply. In fact, they started blaming Moses for their lack of food and water. So Moses spoke to Abba Yah and said that the responsibility of looking after these multitude of nations, these people, these Israelites complaining, it was a burden, a burden greater than what he could bear. In addition, Moses is saying that he knows of no other way to provide for such a large number of people with food and water. Moses says that he does not have the power or the ability to supply what these people needed. And that we can read in verses 10 to 15. So Moses approached the father and Abba Yah did not rebuke Moses for his outburst. No, you see, Abba saw these stiff-necked people's attitudes and he understood Moses' troubles. He understood what Moses is going through. And Abba intervened and he helped Moses. Abba then commanded Moses to bring 70 of the leading elders of Israel to the tabernacle where he, where he gave them a share of the spirit that was over Moses. He gave to these elders as well so that they could help Moses. You see that to help Moses in the government of the people to listen to the people. Abba responded to Moses' second demand by promising a supply of meat that, would, um, that Father would give to the people. Listen, more than they asked for, and even in this greed of the people for meat, they would eat so much that they would become sick of it. And that we can read in, um, from verses 16 to 23 of Numbers 11. So just in these verses, we see that Abba reacts on our demands. The question is, how do we react? So let's study this verse a bit deeper. When we read, it says, is the arm of Yahuwah too short? This is the arm, the arm or the hand is the concordance number H3027. And it means the ability or the power. So Father is asking here, he says, Am I not able to, or do not ha I have all the power to do what you guys ask of me? But this H3207 is linked to another word, and it means consecrate. Listen quickly. Consecrate means to devote to a purpose. To declare or set apart as sacred. So here Father is teaching us that we are set apart and therefore He has a purpose for us. And listen, with His ability, His power, we will conquer. 
This is the home of Yah too short. This too short is the Hebrew concordance number H7114. And it means limited. Too short means limited or shortcoming. So Father is asking, is my hand too short? Am I limited? In other words, my son and my daughter, is there a shortcoming in me? Father is saying that he is not limited. Because his hand or his arm is not too short. By his power and his ability, he can do anything for he is able but it's also uh, linked to the falling listen to reap or to harvest so father is saying he's not limited you and i can reap or we can harvest father is saying that he will fulfill his word he will bring a harvest to his word and to our praise and is this not what we have been discussing the past few weeks Word is the concordance number H1697. It means acts. It means the Father's commands or literally His words. In other words, that which He has spoken. Abba Yahuwah, my brother and sister, our Abba Yah is saying today, His arm is not too short to fulfill His word and His purpose in our lives. He is not limited by our limits. His power, His ability, His strength is not limited to our limits or our thoughts or our understanding. Exodus 3 verses 12 we read, And He said, Because I am with you, and this is to you the sign that I have sent you, when you have brought the people out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, you are the, to serve a lure on His mountain. So from the beginning, Father Yah is telling Moses that he is with him. He said, I'll give you a sign that I am with you. You see, my brother and sister, when we read and study Exodus 3, then we see Abba did not just give Moses his word that he will be with him. No, no. Father says, I'll give you a sign that I am with you. And did Father not give you and me a sign? So if Father gave His Word and a sign to Moses today, we, and when we study His Word, then we see Father did the same to you and me, the same promises. Then why do we doubt or get anxious? Father gave us His Son. What better uh, sign do you and I need or want? Why do we get anxious then? Abba Yah is not a man that he should lie. He does not change. His word is truth. Therefore, we are called as children of his. Listen, to stand on his word of truth. To stand on the one that's able to supply. On the one who is able to protect. On the one who is able to save. Abba is not limited by anything we might limit him by. I want to say this again. Abba is not limited by anything we limit him by. You see, our human thoughts and fleshly limits or our understanding of things does not limit the Father. We are the ones who create this box. We are the ones who build it out of our own understanding, our own frustrations and our own limits. And then we want to put Abba Yah in this box. And then we want him to be able to provide, but we limit him by our thoughts. So we see how Abba reacts different towards those who complain and towards those who seek for his help. Let's understand this. You and I have a choice. We can complain about our circumstances or we can approach him regarding our circumstances. You see, like so many times in the Bible, we are told we have a choice. We can complain of what we do not have or because of the circumstances in our lives. Or I can go to the creator of heaven and earth and give him all my circumstances. I can give him all my issues, my shortcomings, and I can trust in him to help me, to guide me. And just the same way Abba helped Moses when Moses uh, gave everything to the Father and says, only by your ability, only by your power. You and I can do the same, my brother and sister. 
So by us complaining and always looking at our circumstances, we are saying that the arm of the Father cannot reach far enough into my love. His arm cannot reach far, far enough into my marriage to save it. His arm can, cannot reach far enough into any uh, relationship with anyone to save that. No, no. We limit the Father worth us complaining. We limit Him by Him wanting to fulfill His purposes in our lives. With us not going to the Father in prayer of faith and in trust, we limit Him. You see, He's not limited, but we limit Him because we don't go to Him. We don't ask Him. Isaiah 59 verse 1 says, Look, the hand of Yah has not become too short to save, nor his ear too heavy to hear. My brother and sister, just like we discussed last week, Father hears the prayers of the righteous, and he hears those calling upon his name. What does Abba still have to do for you or me? What does Abba still have to do for the Israelites to prove his love and his grace in our lives? What has Abba not done to convince you and me that his power is always unlimited? His ability is unlimited. And yet we, we as men, we fall into the sin of this wickedness of doubt and anxiety. We fall into this sin of not approaching the Father, but wanting to do things in our own strength. Complaining about our own circumstances. You see, the Father has the power to save. He has the power to supply. Whatever we need. Whatever is in His will, like we've discussed already. When I doubt... When I complain, and we need to see this today, Abba says that is sin. When you and I complain, you see, when we complain, we act in a fleshly nature. And we as children of Yah are not called to act fleshly. How many times are we taught, but in all things to pray, in other words, to act in the spirit. Not to act in the flesh. To pray means to act in the spirit. To trust the Father for our needs. To trust Him for our circumstances. Let's understand one thing today. No matter what our circumstances are. Father does not look at our circumstances to determine whether He's going to hear us or not. He does not look at you or my circumstances to determine whether He's going to help you or me or not. No, no, no. He looks at our hearts. You see, Abba knows our hearts and the intentions of our hearts. So whether my circumstances, so whatever, sorry, my circumstances are, the question is, and will always be, how do I react? Am I going to complain about my circumstances because I don't have, I'm, I'm tired of eating manna? I'm tired of the things in my life? Or am I going to approach the Father? Am I going to act in the flesh? Or am I going to act in the spirit? Am I acting out of fleshly needs or do I have a spiritual approach? You see, that's what Moses did. Moses approached the Father. John 4, 24 says his spirit. Moses approached the Father. So are we focused on our fleshly lust and desires to satisfy the flesh out of a fleshly need? Am I seeking to satisfy my stomach? Or am I looking to satisfy my circumstances or needs out of the heart's desire to hear from the Father. Out of a heart's desire to approach the Father and ask Him for help, just like Moses did. You see, Moses acknowledged that he can't help this people. Moses acknowledged that he does not have the means, the ability or the power to help them, even though they look to him for help. Moses did not walk around in pride and strife and looking to solve their problems by himself. No, no, no. Moses knew, sorry, Moses knew only the Father could help them. Therefore, he looked 
unto the Creator. He looked unto the giver of life. He looked unto the one who sent him to Mitzrayim in the first place. Because then in Exodus we read that he said, I am with you, Moses. So why, why do we doubt? In times we are living in where everything is about convenience and comfort and we so easily and so many times get upset or impatient and rebellious when we do not get our ways. Let's start focusing on matters above my brother and sister. Let's focus on the Father. And just like Moses, how about telling Moses in Numbers eleven twenty three, Moses do not fear. Do not fear about the day of tomorrow. Abba is and will be his provider, his salvation, his protector. And just the same, my brother and sister, Father is saying the same today to you and me. Your creator, your heavenly father will hear you. He will save you. He will provide for you. He will protect you. All we need to do is trust him. Go to him first and not to man. In other words, Go to him in prayer. Go to him in spirit. So let's stop complaining. Let's stop being anxious for nothing, for, for anything. And let's focus on the Father. And let's inquire of him. Let's ask him. Instead of we going to men regarding our circumstances, let's go to the Father regarding our circumstances. That is the choice we have in our lives. We can act like the Israelites, or we can act like Moses. So let's pray. Abba, Ya Father, again, I want to thank you for this week, Abba. Thank you for another week in which you protected us, you supplied for us, Father, you saved us. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for listening to your children, Father. Abba, yeah, so many times we can walk around and not to point fingers at the Israelites, Father, and just to, and not to say that that's the way they are and we are not like that, Father, because that is a lie. We so many times in our lives act just the same as the Israelites. Complaining when we do have something to sleep on, complaining when we do have something to eat, Father. Oh, but it's my prayer that you will forgive us of our sins. That you'll forgive us of every time that we complain, Abba. But by your spirit, but by your ruach, Father, I ask that you will, that you will teach us and that you'll come and show us the provisions in our lives that we so many times do not see because we look at circumstances, Father. I ask that you will open our eyes, Father, to see where you've provided, to see where you've protected, to see where you've carried us, Father, to see where you've saved us. That is my prayer, Father. That's my prayer for me and my family. And that is my prayer for your children. That we'll see your goodness and your kindness, your grace and your mercy, your favor in our lives. And may we not get stuck on circumstances, Abba. I praise you and I honor you. And Daddy, thank you. Thank you for the Shabbat. May we, your children, enter your rest. And may we be content with what we have, Father. But not just content. May we think. Thank you for what we have. In Yeshua, your Son, our Messiah and King, in His mighty name, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask for your strength, your ability, your means, and your favor in our lives, Father. Amen. Receive this blessing from the Almighty King. Yeverechecha Yahuwa v'yishmerecha. Yae Yahua Pana Velecha Vichunecha Yesa Yahua Pana Velecha Viasem Lecha Shalom. May Abba Yah bless you and keep you. 
May Abba Yah make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Abba Yah lift up His countenance upon you and He gives you peace. Shalom, shalom. Enjoy your Shabbat.